My name is Carrie McGinn. I'm just going to pin my video so we can. Alrighty, well, happy Wednesday. Like I said, my name is Carrie McGinn. I'm a physical therapist and yoga instructor in the Boston area. I am so excited to bring you Walk Your Way to Help. So in just a moment, I'm going to share my screen um, with, I have a little lecture set up. There will be some pictures and some recommendations as we go along. I'm happy for you to take a screenshot of them if you'd like. There will also be this recording so you can always come back and look at it. There will be plenty of time for questions at the end. So if you have a question as we go along, I ask that you stay muted for now just so that everyone can hear the presentation properly. And at the end, I will open up for questions. If you're afraid you're going to forget your question, please feel free to pop it into the chat and I'll just go back through the chat afterwards and take a look at everything. So without further ado, let's dive in. Oh, I have to share my screen first. I almost forgot that part. <laughs> Alrighty. Beautiful. Takes just a moment to load. There we are. So today we're talking all about walking your way to health. And I'll be completely honest, I'm really excited for this because over the past year, um, myself, I've gotten really into a routine of walking for mental and physical health benefit. Um, it started during the pandemic for me because I had a lot more time than I previously had. And it's extended a little bit, although I did take a short break in the winter time because winters in Boston are no joke sometimes. So I'm really excited to share this with you because it's something I'm personally super passionate about. A little bit of an outline of what we're gonna go through today. We're gonna talk about some of the benefits of walking, different things to consider before getting started, how to prepare, supporting your body along the way, talk a little bit about increasing endurance, the additional benefits and different ways to mix it up. I have some great resources at the end that will be super helpful for anyone who wants to learn more. So first and foremost, why walking? Really, what are you gonna gain? What's, what's the reason to really dive in? So it is going to improve your health overall, mental, physical, emotional. The benefits can come from just 30 minutes of walking a day. Can, you can really start to have your desired benefits. It's free, doesn't require any special equipment or training, and it really truly affects the whole body. And it, it doesn't need to be strenuous. It can be, you can make it, whatever you want to make it, but it doesn't need to be something hardcore. I will even, maybe not in a heat wave, but I will even walk at the end of my day and not necessarily feel like I need to shower afterwards. So it's a great exercise kind of to fit into your day. If you don't always have the time to spend an hour at the gym or shower after exercising, or even necessarily wear like a full workout outfit, you can make it fit into your schedule and you can make it work for you personally, your body, your needs, your work schedule, your life schedule, things like that. And, and where you live too, because it's gonna be different depending on where you live. And in general, walking to me is A, one of the most accessible forms of exercise for most people. And I say most, because I recognize it's not always accessible to everyone, whether it be um, Ill illness, injury, or even environment. Um, and it is one of the exercises that I think everyone can benefit regardless of age, whether you're 16, 25, or 55, or anywhere in between, or even 75, anywhere in between, you can have benefits from walking. And it doesn't need to be the same program for each person or the same intensity. Each person can make walking what fits their life and their schedule and their body and their age. So let's go a little bit into some of the physical and emotional and mental benefits of walking. I'm a firm believer that it's much easier to commit to a new ritual and routine if you know the benefits, i.e. why should you even start this? So some of the physical benefits, increased cardiovascular and pulmonary fitness. Pulmonary is heart and lung. So improving the capacity of your heart and lungs, which therefore reduces your risk of heart disease and stroke, as well as kind of all this goes hand in hand, the improvement and management of hypertension with this blood, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, joint and muscle pain or stiffness and diabetes. It can create stronger bones, especially if you have osteoporosis, um, weight bearing through the bones in a low impact way is really great for strengthening the bones. 
It's really great for maintaining and improving balance. It's very, very important as you age to continue to work on your balance. If you have better balance, you're less likely to fall and have all the comorbidities, illnesses, and injuries that come along with that. It also can increase muscle strength and endurance, especially of the lower body, and reduces body fat. Some other things it does for our physical bodies is improve circulation. It's really great if you're feeling stiff or sluggish or your hands and feet are feeling swollen, get the circulation moving, it gets your whole body going. It's also in that term, super great if you've been sitting for a long day, or maybe you've been, not that many people have been on an airplane lately, but if you've been on an airplane, if you've been seated for a long period of time, it really helps improve circulation. And if you already have been diagnosed with osteoporosis, it can help decrease the loss of bones or decrease how quickly the loss of bone structure. Research shows that it improves longevity, which is a longer life. Um, there was one, one research study I was looking into that said it, People who are, I think it was the age of 75, who walked every day added seven years to their life. It can help you lose weight. So 30 minutes of brisk walking burns 200 calories. And I'll be completely honest, I'm not someone who's like all about the calories, all about the weight loss. It's just kind of a nice benefit to have. But there are really great benefits for adding walking. And if you are looking to do a weight loss program, whether by your doctor or someone else, um, walking can help you hit those goals. It's a very low impact way to lose weight. In fact, it's less stressful on the body. So sometimes it's better than some activities like running or high intensity intervals. It can also improve sleep, which helps with all those benefits I already listed, improves breath capacity and your breath and increases energy levels. Who doesn't want more energy these days? <laughs> So some of the emotional and mental benefits, and I will be completely honest, I think I walk every day or I try to walk every day. I'll be completely honest. The past couple of days in, um, in where I live in Boston have been brutally hot. So I did not get out the past two days, but I made sure to get out this morning at like 8 a.m. when it was still only like 75, 80 degrees because that was better. But I ideally, I really walk for emotional and mental benefits. It really helps me in those realms and kind of keeps me grounded and focused on my work. So it can help improve your mood. It slows down mental decline and lowers the risk of Alzheimer's. and also reduce stress and tension. I love to walk before a long day at work or in front of the computer because it helps me get in the right mindset for the day. Improves memory and cognition. Can decrease anxiety and depression. And I also, this is actually one of my, my favorites, the increased creative output. So it helps to explore alternative solutions and promotes a mental state that's really conducive to innovative ideas. So if I'm working on a new project or even actually before I made this PowerPoint, kind of putting all my thoughts together, I went out for a 30 minute walk and it really just helps get the juices flowing and kind of resets your mind so you can better tackle the task at hand. It can also increase self-confidence and attentiveness. So I really am a lover of quotes and sharing them with people. So while this isn't particularly just towards walking, it's going to be great to help when we talk about getting started. So the first step, step towards getting somewhere is to decide that you are not going to be where you are. So anytime we're talking about creating a new routine, a new habit, it requires effort to get started. And it can be daunting. It can be hard to get started. But really the first step to getting started on any new routine, especially a fitness routine, is to decide that you're not going to be where you are. So maybe you're sitting here listening and you're like, I need to make a change, whether it's for my mental capacity, my emotional capacity, my physical body, I need to make a change. I need to add something into my life that's going to improve it in some way. You've already taken the first step, deciding that you don't want to be necessarily where you are and that you're ready to make a change. So we're going to talk about how to get started then. So before even hitting the road and getting started, there's a couple of things that I want you, each of you to consider. One is always check with your doctor first. I am not, I am a doctor, but I'm not your doctor. So I'll give general recommendations here, but I can't tell you if walking is the right fit for you and your body and your pre previous medical history. So just check in with your doctor if there are any concerns that you have, kind of screening out for any medical history or things that to be concerned of. Like I said, walking is probably one of the best forms of exercises for most people. 
So there are very few people, unless you have a severe injury or illness that a doctor will rule out walking for, but it's always good to check first if you're not sure. And then check in with your body. Do you have any lingering muscle pains, aches, injuries that you might, that might hold you back on starting a walking routine? If you're sitting here thinking, you know, I have this knee pain or I have this hip pain, um, walking most likely will help, but it's always great to head to a physical therapist first. And I'll be honest, I recommend, I'm biased as a physical therapist myself, but if you have any movement related pain, I would recommend seeing a physical therapist first versus a doctor. Just once again, to make sure that you are good to go when you hit the road. Most physical therapists, myself included, will recommend walking as um, part of the rehab routine, but it's always good if you're starting with pain, you know, sitting here right now to screen it out and make sure it works, that, that it's gonna work for you. And then check in with your schedule. So once again, this goes back to really starting a new routine or a habit. It can be hard to find a place to, to set that routine into your schedule. Start with just taking inventory of where you are. What's the best time of day for you? When do you have free time? When do you have the most energy? Will you need to shower before or afterwards? Things like that. Plan ahead so that you don't wake up one morning and then you're rushing all around to get in your walk and get into work and get breakfast. Um, I think this scheduling will also change based on the seasons. You know, in the summertime, you might not want to be walking in the middle of the day. You might want to get up a little bit earlier or you might want to wait till after dinner. Um, in the wintertime, you might want to walk more on your lunch break because that's probably when it's going to be warmest. So that scheduling might change as the seasons change. So just keep checking in with yourself and seeing what's working. And then check in with your gear. Um, it is important, and we'll talk about it here in just a second, to prepare yourself with the right gear so that you're comfortable. So in terms of gear, I'm not going to give specific recommendations for shoes because I really do believe that it depends on each person's foot, each person's experience. Some people like less supportive shoes, some people like more supportive shoes, and it really has to dive into injuries, foot structure, body structure, um, personal preference, things like that. I would say I would not recommend going for a 30 minute walk in these bad boys dress shoes. Actually, I don't know if any of these I'd recommend, maybe these guys or these guys, um, but make sure you have shoes that fit you comfortably, not shoes that are too tight or too big. One of the things that I actually get concerned most about with shoes is blisters, because blisters can be one of those painful things that you just kind of have to wait till they go away and can really impede your progress. You want to find shoe support that really fits you. So there's even a lot of places out there, shoe stores out there now that you can go and get like a, a imprint of your foot and they can give recommendations based on your foot structure. I used to be able to give exact recommendations, but even in the past 10 years of being in the field, um, we just have so many more options for shoes. So it's hard. So I would say check in with your shoes, make sure they fit comfortably, make sure they're not torn or anything like that. Um, so that you're set up for a success. And then wear clothes that move well with you and won't cause skin irritation. That doesn't necessarily need to be like a full workout outfit, but something that I find that you're not gonna be pulling out the whole time, that's not digging into your skin, that's not gonna cause chafing or rubbing that will make you uncomfortable. So it's something that you feel comfortable enough to walk in. You know, I do have work clothes that I feel comfortable enough to walk in, and then I do have some other work clothes that I don't. Also wearing clothes that are appropriate for the season. You don't wanna be freezing on a winter walk and you don't wanna be overly hot on a summer walk. Sunglasses and a hat can be really helpful for the summertime. And if you're walking at night, try to have light clothing or reflective gear just so you're staying safe. So the next step is really preparing your body and your mind. So like I mentioned, check in with your PT or an MD to make sure your physical body is ready for a new activity. This is something that's just important to do to make sure you are good to go and you don't have any concerns. Supporting yourself with gear that fits. This goes back to clothes too. Not wearing clothes that are too tight or too small can be really helpful. And then stretching and strength training can be helpful as well to support your walking. Strength training is not absolutely necessary, but I do think stretching is necessary, especially if you are newer to walking. And don't worry, we're going to dive into stretches in just a moment. This is where you might want to write some things down or take some pictures. And then preparing your mind is equally as important as preparing your body. So you want to set yourself up for success in multiple ways. Planning ahead is important. So say you're walking first thing in the morning, you want to plan ahead. So maybe you have a smoothie already made. Maybe you have water set out or your clothes laid out. Plan so that you 
feel confident in your walk and it's not adding more stress to your life. Same thing with the, in the evening. Maybe it's the type of thing where you bring um, your a different change of clothes with you to work and sneakers in your car so you can change at work and pop your sneakers on and hit up maybe a nice nature preserve on your way home from the office. Give yourself a little bit of extra time, especially when you get, first get started and you're not sure what your pace is to be able to get back home and have enough time to do all your other tasks. The last thing I want is for it to be a stressful experience for you. So really setting yourself up for success is gonna decrease that. And then setting smart goals is also important because we wanna be realistic. If you haven't been walking or exercising at all for even the past month, you don't wanna say go out and say, I'm gonna do a 45 minute walk and super fast, be done, do three miles and 45 minutes and or five miles and 45 minutes and cruise. No, you wanna be realistic. It's better to start small and build up so that your body and your mind are prepared. That way, one, you're preventing injury and you're preventing yourself from feeling defeated. So SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So a great example is I'm going to walk for five minutes or let's say 10 minutes. I'm going to go for a 10 minute walk five out of the next seven days. That is specific, 10 minutes of walking, measurable, 10 minutes of walking, attainable, it's not going too fast or too long, relevant to what you want to do, and you have seven days to get it done. Start there and then build yourself up. And we'll talk a little bit about more about planning kind of a walking routine in the next couple of slides. Um, this is also really important so that you're meeting your goals and you're not feeling overwhelmed by it. So if you're trying to work up to walking 45 minutes, you're probably not going to do that right out the gate. And then don't forget to breathe. When you're walking, breathing is really important. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but making sure you're breathing and you're paying attention to your breath can really help your mind, especially if you're feeling anxious about starting a new routine. And then last but not least, sometimes it's easier to just start and not think too, too much about it. So how do you support your body along the way? We're going to dive into a bunch of different stretches that I really recommend if you have walking in your routine. And honestly, I recommend for anyone, regardless of what their exercise routine is, a little bit of strength training, just a, a touch on that. And food and water as well, especially during the hot summer months, making sure you are hydrated. Water is going to be important. Electrolytes are going to be important. I always like people to have at least before, if you say you're walking in the morning, have at least a glass of water before you go and then have a glass of water when you get back, especially, especially, especially in the hot summer months. Equally as important if you walk along throughout the day to nourish yourself with water as well. There, the statistic really is you should have about an half to half your body weight in ounces of water a day. Yes, I said that right. So say you weigh 150 pounds, you should have about 75 ounces of water a day. That might seem a lot if you're not a big water drinker, but it's really important for our muscles, our brain health, our um, cardiovascular health, our lymphatic system to have enough water and hydration. And then food. I am not a nutritionist. I am not here to give you specific examples on food, but it is important to fuel your body. You want to make sure that you're having a good mix of protein, fats, and carbs before or after your walks. If you're Walking first in the morning, some people don't like eating right away. I totally understand that. But making sure if you're not eating right before your walk, that you are fueling yourself really well after your walk. Let's dive into some stretches. So I'm going to go through a couple different types of stretches. So these are seated stretches. These are ones you can do at your desk, whether before walking, after walking, in the middle of your day. This one in the top left-hand corner here stretches the outer hip. Let's all practice these now if you're at your desk. So you're going to sit on the edge of your chair and place your right foot flat on the ground. You're then going to take your left ankle and cross it over your right thigh. Sitting up nice and tall, you might feel stretch already. I actually do today. And then you're going to hinge forward and find a stretch in your left outer hip and start to breathe. We'll stay here for four breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Full breath in long breath out. One more inhale and then exhale left foot flat on the ground. We'll take the right ankle over the left thigh and just take a hinge forward. You can rest your hands on your shins. 
your elbows on your shins, or you might not even need to hinge forward at all. These are two great stretches for the outer hips. Alrighty, right foot comes flat. Let's do the next one. Sitting at the edge of your chair, you're gonna extend your left leg with your toes pointed and then hinging at your hips, you're gonna lean forward until you feel a gentle stretch behind your left leg. Taking a few breaths here. And then coming back up to seated, we'll switch sides. Left foot comes flat, right leg comes straight. So I'm doing the one on the top right-hand corner. I apologize, I should have said that before. Right leg straight, toes are pointed. You're gonna hinge right at your hips like you're trying to reach for your toes. You wanna feel sensation, but not pain as you lean forward. Take one more breath in and exhale, come on up. Now the last one are seated cat cows. So I like to take my hands to my kneecaps. On your inhale, you're gonna lift your heart, lift your gaze, arch your back. On your exhale, you're gonna tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone, round your back. Inhale, heart lifts, tailbone arches, back arches, exhale, round. That's really great for your spine, your hips, and your low back. So those are seat stretches. You can either do them before walking or after. There's no, I'd honestly say do both if you can. I think stretching is really important. And these are some stretches you can do along the way. So on this left side, there's a quad stretch. So reaching back for your foot. A couple of keys here is you wanna make sure your knees are in line, that your shoulders and hips are stacked and you're not arching your low back. And then you're giving a little squeeze of this bum muscle that is held with this hand. This is an extreme version. I don't expect everyone to throw their foot up on the top of a bench, but you can place your foot on a bench like this and just lean forward, similar to that hamstring stretch we just did in a chair. If there's a bench, you can also put, just sit on the bench and take a little hamstring stretch like we did on the previous slide. This is great for the hip flexors, kind of putting one foot up and leaning forward. These, these can do like, say you're walking and you find a little bench along the way, they can be really grateful to hold onto the bench and do these. And then these are some great stretches for after the walk. And I'm not gonna take you through all of these, but this is a hamstring stretch in half kneeling with blocks. This opens up the front of the hips. This opens up the outer hips. This is the same one we did in seated just on your back. And this is downward dog. This is great for the hamstrings, the back, the shoulders and the calves. So these are all great. You can do these before as well, but they're also great for after the walk. And these are kind of the key muscles that I would stretch out after walking. Alrighty. So, and I can always come back here if you guys need. So some of the top strength exercises that I don't, I'm not gonna dive too deep into these because I think the stretching is more important don't get me wrong, I think everyone should strength train. That's my bias as a physical therapist and get strong. But I also think that stretching is, is almost more important if you're just getting started in a routine and strength training can be a little bit overwhelming. So these are just my top seven strength exercises, calf raises, otherwise known as heel raises, squats, lateral band walking. So that's kind of some side stepping side to side, um, lunges, planks, side planks, step ups. And this is a picture of a step up here. Um, I have videos of a lot of these on my YouTube channel. If you just search Carrie McGinn and live good, feel good. Oops. Um, you can also just search that on YouTube in general, and you'll find some good explanations from a variety of sources for these exercises. Alrighty. So I actually took this plan from the Mayo Clinic. This is a great example, um, but you can really tweak it however you'd like. This is a way to increase endurance and kind of build up to 30 minutes here. So it is recommended to do a short warm up and a cool down, especially if you're brisk walking. What I will say is if you're not, so brisk walking is you're walking at a pace where it's challenging to your heart rate and your breath, but you can still talk while breathing. So you're not running, but you're not leisurely walking. So one thing I will say, if you are leisurely walking and you're not going for brisk walking, Take out that cool down and that, that warm up phase and just start with the five minutes to seven minutes to nine minutes to 11 minutes, all the way up to 30 minutes. If you are doing brisk walking, so picking up the pace, start with a slower five minute walk and then do five minutes of brisk walking and then cool down at a slower pace. Same thing each week, just increasing the brisk walking, so the walking at a challenging pace by a few minutes each time. 
So these are just an example of a plan. It doesn't need to be this specific, it can be, but the important thing here is to slowly increase over time. And you might be like, hey, I can walk already for five minutes. So you might start here. That's totally fine. You have to assess where you are and start where you are. Um, like I said, these are just general recommendations. Each person listening today will have a different body, will feel differently, and will need kind of different things to address their needs. So feel free to take a screenshot of this, like I said, um, and adapt it to your needs. This is found on the Mayo Clinic. So some other great benefits of walking include mindfulness, mother nature, and breath work. So you can use your walking, especially if you're doing a slower walk, you can use walking as more of a mindful experience. Um, taking a moment to close your eyes, to listen to the sounds around you, feel your body as it moves, feel your feet as they hit the floor, smell the fresh air, really be in your body and make it more of a mindfulness activity than necessarily like a full blown out exercise. I sometimes will do, I'd actually talk about this over here in box breathing with walking. So what that is, box breathing is inhaling for a count of four, holding for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four and holding for a count of four. Sometimes when I'm trying to make my walking a little bit more mindful, I'll do that walking. So I'll inhale for four steps, hold for four steps, exhale for four steps and hold for four steps. And I'll repeat that for as long as I feel comfortable. So you can really change, take it into almost like a walking meditation, which has a ton of benefits. Another way to gather some additional benefits from walking is to do your walk out in mother nature. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a hike that can be going to a park, a nature preserve, um, walking along a river, a river path, things like that. There are a ton of mental and physical health benefits to being outdoors. I can do an entire lecture on the health benefits of being outdoors. Harness these benefits by taking your walks outdoors. I said, don't make it complicated. You know. I live in Brighton, um, in Boston, and sometimes it's just walking down to the Charles and taking a loop around the Charles. So getting yourself outdoors can be really helpful. I'll also say, I mentioned earlier, but this walking plan and walking in general, you can do on a treadmill or you can do outdoors. I'm personally partial to outdoors. I don't really have easy access to a treadmill. So I'd rather go outdoors, which is why weather kind of affects me sometimes more. And then you can use it as a chance to practice breath work, which is another mindful experience. So using it even just as a chance to connect to your breath and notice your breath. When you're stressed, you might have quicker breath. When you're calm, you have lightly slower breath. So at first it might just be noticing your breath as you walk, noticing your inhales and exhales, the pattern of your breath, how you feel, things like that. You can also use it to practice nasal breathing, which is breathing in and out through your nose only. Nasal breathing is really, really important for overall health and wellness. And you can practice that while you are walking. So just breathing in through your nose, out through your nose. You can also, like I said, practice box breathing, inhaling for a count of four, holding for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four, holding for a count of four, and repeating. Mindful breath and walking really is a double when you just exponentially increase the benefits. Honestly, doing any of these three things exponentially increases the benefits of walking. So last but not least, how to stay motivated and to keep it interesting. This can be the hardest part, especially after doing a routine for a little bit of a while, or maybe kind of the weather is impeding you, things like that. Things come up and we lose motivation. I'll be honest, it's more about discipline than motivation. I find that if people stay consistent and even just myself included, even just do 10 minutes a day, it improves their ability to keep going. So other ways to stay motivated and keep it interesting is pick different routes. So you don't get tired of seeing the same sites. Sometimes it's even doing your same route, but doing it backwards, you might notice something different. I'll be honest, I sometimes like to do the same route over and over again, especially um, where I am, there's a couple people with like really beautiful gardens. So it's fun to kind of see how the garden blooms as the seasons change. That's a lot nicer in like the spring, summer, fall than it is in the winter. 
Um, invite a friendly friend or family member along can really bring some joy to the experience. And depending on the weather, walking at various times of the day. So really mixing up the sights and sounds around town. In the morning, it's really quiet in the city and it's nice to kind of just hear the birds, the animals, look at the flowers. In the evening, you might see more of your neighbors out and about. You might hear more traffic. You might notice more kids playing in the yard or dogs playing in the yard. So it can be fun to observe just different things based on the different times of day. Heading to a park reservation or other natural areas just to enjoy a different walk. Maybe if you have more time, even taking it to more of a nature walk hike. Um, I'm a big fan of not listening to music, but I also think listening to a music or podcast can be really helpful if you need your mind to stay occupied. I'll listen to a podcast or an audiobook if I'm like, I feel like I don't have enough time for this. I need to get something done. It kind of is a nice multitasking. And like I spoke about earlier, making it a mindful experience is a different way to approach your walking. And then last but not least, stay realistic. You're gonna miss a day. Things will happen. The weather's hot, the weather's cold. Family stuff gets in the way, work stuff that gets in the way. Don't beat yourself up. As much as consistency is important, if you skip a day that's not throwing everything to the wind and not doing it ever again, that's just a chance to pause, to reflect, and to find a way to fit it in the next day. Beautiful. Here are some other resources to dive a little bit deeper into walking. These are some great books about walking, some of them more about kind of mindfulness and philosophy around walking, some of them are more practical. Move Your DNA is just a great book about movement in general, but she does talk a lot about walking. And Katie Bowman and Jill Miller actually have a whole kind of online course about walking and how to support your body with walking because it's such an important way to move your body. Um, and that's just the Mayo Clinic is where I got that walking program from. There's lots of different walking programs that can be found online. Beautiful. My name is Carrie McGinn. I am a physical therapist, yoga instructor, personal trainer, and coach in the Boston area. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, I'm going to open up the floor right now. Please feel free to ask. Beautiful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat or to unmute yourself and ask them. Um, there's no question that is too silly. Our can you send the URL for these materials to us if it's not already in the meeting somewhere? Uh, which materials specifically, just so I make sure? Uh, well, I was thinking about the exercises and stretches and stuff. So there will be a recording of this um, that, you will, that you will receive from your employer group. So you'll have it in the recording. Okay. Beautiful. And the recording should be to you, um, you know, give it a little bit of time to process, but it won't be too long to receive the recording. Beautiful. Any other questions? Well, I have a couple more minutes. I'll be sticking around if you do have any questions or anything comes up, but otherwise have a wonderful, wonderful day. It was such a pleasure to be here um, and enjoy, stay cool today. Thanks very much. Of course. Have a great day.